Hi, everybody. Welcome to week four of DigPins, our scholarship week. I'm Joe Murphy, and I'm here with my co-facilitators. Say hi, co-facilitators. Hi, I'm hey. Taylor. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Autumn Keynes. I'm the facilitator at the University of Michigan Dearborn. I'm Davey Misho. I'm a learning designer at USM. Well, I can introduce myself. I'm Taylor Jaden from St. Albert College. <laughs> and I'm fine. Like, I'm always by now. Always by now. It just seems like we need to do that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Joe Murphy at Kenyon College. Um, so we're moving into our week that's about uh, scholarship open and online uh, and how those uh, digital identities and networks and our teaching impact uh, the way we do scholarly communication. Uh, we've got three readings to look at uh, this week, uh, which uh, we've tried to kind of cover the uh, cover the gamut from uh, an article that does address that question of how ideas are being generated and tested um, differently in digital networks, and then how they're being published in open frameworks, and how some forms of post peer review are being included with articles. Um, so that we can continue to see how uh, how the the scholarly communication process can be a little more uh, transparent and uh, available. Um, we've got an article that talks about excess versus accessibility in scholarship and science. Uh, a lot of us have terrific um, scholarly repositories, either at our institutions or in our disciplines, or both, where we can. And there is our there's a huge ecosystem of open access journals where we can make journal publications available to everybody. And the article really starts to poke at the question, what good is an open piece of scholarship that uh, is not in your field and you don't really understand? And what are the things that we can do to make those uh, articles uh, a little more accessible to people from outside the field? Um, and then our third reading by Tressie McMillan Cottom is about the things that institutions can do if we're going to say that we value this kind of public engagement uh, and public scholarship. What are the things we can do with institutional priorities to actually make them happen? Um, and what are specific steps we can do to uh, protect people from uh, the invariable disagreements that will happen uh, in online environments? And what are we things we can do to give incentives to people to participate in those structures? Uh, so that's what we've got going on for reading. And then uh, we will on Wednesday, we are having what uh, uh, we have just invented and Autumn has named the Twitter share out. Um, and the idea here is for you to bring us uh, something from your field, some uh, something of, of intellectual heft from your field that you think is accessible to people uh, outside your field. Um, what's something that already exists, we're not asking you to necessarily do new writing, though if you have done, you can certainly share something you've done before. Um, that makes your field a little more accessible to people who aren't as deeply inside it as yourselves. Yeah, and I just kind of jump in and say that um, a couple things you can keep in mind if you're having trouble with this. Um, you know, because it's a tweet, you have a lot of flexibility in, in what you can do, even though it might not seem like it. So you might look at this and go, all right, I only have 280 characters to provide context for this complicated thing. Um, but uh, keep in mind that you know you can reply to your own tweet and have multiple. You could have like a thread. Um, you also could potentially link two pieces of media, like a recording or something, and draw some parallels if if that makes sense. Instead of doing a specific article, um, you've got a lot of options. And of course, if you're having trouble with this, just reach out to your facilitator. I'm sure they have ideas too. And I wanted to, um, it's really interesting that you bring that up, Taylor, because I came across something the other day that I just thought was really fascinating on Twitter. Um, there is a, a huge um, uh, community, especially of folks in public health, um, who try to do this kind of thing, right? Especially, um, well, science, public, public health, all of these kind of things, like we need to educate, like the public needs this information. So um, I found this uh, established Twitter thread. It's uh, called, it's hashtag tweetorial. And um, it's mostly people in the medical field or in the sciences who do a tweet thread 
which if you don't know what a tweet thread is, it's when you reply to yourself. And if you're using Twitter.com, it actually has like a little plus sign. And you can um, basically uh, create a series of tweets rather than just one single tweet. And what folks are doing is they're either using presentations that they've given or even articles that are really dense and they're walking through them piece by piece, sometimes with screenshots from the article or screenshots of slides and um, kind of breaking down these big concepts into something that is um, a little bit more publicly consumable. And I just think it's fascinating. Yeah, I think I'm most excited about that Rick Anderson article. Um, there's so much in there to think about in terms of as academics and our academic training, we're taught that we're kind of en entering into this broader conversation and you kind of have to know the, the right terminology in order to engage with the subject matter. But then when you move towards a public facing role as say, a, you know, as public scholarship and how you disseminate findings and that ability to, uh, you know, like we think of accessibility maybe in terms of, um, you know, people who have certain disabilities or challenges. And now we can think of it in terms of how to make it accessible so that a regular person can engage with your research and actually apply it to everyday life. Cool. Well, this is our last call. Um, as we go into week four, this is the, the close of our time together. We'll see uh, each other uh, on Twitter, especially on the, when you tweet, use the DigiPins hashtag, so we'll be able to see uh, what you're doing on Wednesday, what you're sharing with us. Um, but I just wanted to say uh, thanks to everybody for uh, participating and giving us such an interesting cohort to work with. Thank you to my wonderful co-facilitators uh, who've been great to work with all summer. It has been a really wonderful run. Thank you, everyone, for all of your contributions and time and energy around these. Um, it's really great to be able to do this kind of work online um, and to be able to do it in a networked way with a bunch of different institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely throw in on that networked. I think, you know, that that initial idea of moving away from the point and click kind of workshop where you turn up for four hours on a Thursday and turning it into this broader network outside of our institution. Had a really great time and I, I hope, um, I hope I know my co cohort has already gotten a, a great deal out of the experience. So thanks everyone. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Well, thanks everybody and have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.